Welcome back to our video modules on mechanics and materials. Today, I'd like to take a look at a rubber band. So you can imagine that I'm pulling on the rubber band and I'm stretching it. So this is equivalent to the strain we see in normal materials. However, notice that when I stretch it, the thickness changes, the width of it changes, it gets narrow. And when I release it, the thickness increases or the width increases. How does this correspond to what we've learned so far? Today, we're going to talk about how strain in one direction affects strain in the other direction and learn about the Poisson ratio. Let's start by revisiting the beam that we had looked at earlier, where we have some sort of applied force. And what we saw is that there's some sort of deformation that occurs. And we called that deformation delta. And then we use that to find the strain. However, this isn't actually what happens. If we look at it more carefully, we see that we do get a strain in the direction of the force. But if we're really careful about measuring the width of the material, we notice that there's also some sort of delta, we'll say, in the x direction, if we define, say, some sort of x like this and some sort of y here. So smart people started doing experiments. We have some sort of deformation in the y direction and some sort of deformation in the x direction. And what they found is that the ratio of these two, the deformation in the y and the deformation in the x, stayed constant for given materials. Then they looked at it in three dimensions. And they found that the same deformation happening in the x direction also occurs in the z direction. Let's go ahead and you know, put z here so it's clear. My apologies for the drawing of this coordinate system. In fact, the Z should be going into the screen. The error isn't substantive, but it may be confusing. My apologies. So to describe this behavior, they made a ratio. Lateral strain divided by axial strain. Because the strain here is negative, right? The thing is in compression. It's getting smaller. The strain here is positive, and it's always going to be like that. There's always going to be, you extend it in this direction, and it's going to shrink in this direction. So, so we always look at the absolute value, and we call this the Poisson ratio. Shorthand for this is new. So what does this look like when we use it? It means that the strain in the x direction, or one of the lateral directions, is equal to the Poisson ratio times the strain in the y direction. Now remember, these strains, one's positive, one's negative, so, and the Poisson ratio is always positive, so you get this negative sign in here. And in the same way, if we wanted to put that, look at the other lateral strain, we'd see that the lateral strain in the z direction equals negative nu times the strain in the y direction. In this way, we can relate the strain in the axial direction to experimentally what we see in materials, the strain in the lateral directions. I should note these relationships only hold for homogeneous and isotropic materials. So in summary, experimentally we see a relationship between the lateral strains or the material shrinking or contracting in some way and the hors of the axial strain where you're pulling it in a certain direction. We see that this ratio between the strains is con constant with materials. We'll cover the why and the how of what's happening inside the material at a later time. 